Hello and Harry Free TV members of the UN have to. And today I'm going to be reviewing the Harley Quinn animated series. With the fourth season just coming out, I thought it would be great to look back on the first three seasons. And once the fourth season comes out in the UK, I will be doing a review of that. So stay tuned for that. And right, let's get into the review. So the Harley Quinn series debuted on November 2019th and featured Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy and Harley going through a journey of trying to find her own identity outside of the Joker. What I really love about this series is that it really tackles like serious storytelling but, but also has really, really good comedy writing, like some of the jokes in the series I genuinely laughed at. Um, and honestly, I think the Harley Quinn show is probably the best TV show we've gotten from DC so far. So the first season of Harley Quinn is about Harley trying to get over the Joker. And honestly, the first season is my favourite. So each season has a different arc, a different story. Season 1 has Harley trying to get over the Joker. Season 2 has Harley come to terms with her feelings for Poison Ivy, also trying to take control of Gotham City. And Season 3 is about Harley and Ivy's relationship. And Season 4 looks to be about Harley fighting alongside the Bat family, and I find that very interesting. I really love the growth that Harley Quinn has in this series. Season 1 is my favourite in the series because I find it really relatable. Like, a couple of months ago, in fact, I think nearly a year or two ago now, I was getting over an abuse of uh, toxic friendship. Uh, in the similar, in the similar vein as to when Harley gets over the joke, how Harley gets over the Joker, and I find that really relatable, especially when Harley is tempted to relapse back into her old way with the Joker in the first season, and the way it kind of ends, the way it kind of ends with Harley Quinn finally being over the Joker for good. Gotham City is in, in collapse. Batman is... Oh man, Batman is missing as well. It's a game in such a great way. And the direction the series is going, I really love how it almost feels like a different show, but in the best way possible. It doesn't feel like a generic DC show, and I admire the creative, the writing for that. The way they take the story in these new directions is really good. The fact that Batman isn't the main focus and yet he plays a big part in the Harley story is ingenious. And the fact that he's the one to have him kind of disappear. We never really see him after he's captured by the Joker. Well, the last we see of him in the very last episode at the first season, and when he gave Harley and Joker, Harley and Joker, Harley and Ivy from being crushed in the rubble of the crumbling Joker tower that the Joker created, and we never really see him until season two. Season two again is really good. The f and the story of Harley trying to go, Harley basically get trying to shut herself out from ever feeling love again, but also coming to terms with her feeling for Ivy is genuinely really sweet. And I really love the writing dynamic with these two. I love the dynamic between Harley and Ivy. You've got the moody teenager who's always, taking, who's always really focused and taking everything seriously, while you've got the re her really chaotic friend who's always causing chaos and mayhem in the best way possible. It's like, it's really the best friendship dynamic we've seen so far, and soon to be more than friends, and I love that about the show. I genuinely really love the comedy writing as well, and how it doesn't take itself seriously. Like, it does have a serious moment, but the fact that it's a comedy show makes, makes 
the fact that we're rooting for these villains even better. Like these villains like King Shark, Harley Quinn, Dr. Psycho, Clayface, Harley Qu <laughs> Poison Ivy, and um, Cy, the Cyborgman, the guy in the wheelchair. The fact that these, the, these villains are so likeable in this comedy show shows how well the how good the writing is. If it was a serious show, I don't think it personally would have really worked. The only kind of serious villain centric story works is in an origin. Um, at least in my opinion, and I really think the writing in the Harley Quinn animated series with the villains and Harley herself, and even the Bat Family and Batman and all the good guys in Gotham are all really good. They're all really likeable in their own way, and that's what I love about this show. There's no two sides. Everyone's just likeable. Well, maybe except for Dr. Psycho, but yeah, <laughs> that's just him. I really like the fact that Dr. Psycho kind of turns into a main, turns into a main villain near the end of season two. I think it, and I think it suits really well with the character, considering he's a misogynist troll with an ego problem. It's really fitting for a character to suddenly go back to like the dark side and leaving Harley Quinn's crew for good. And the fact that this show kind of developed Harley from being an outright baggie to almost being an anti-hero is really good. It's amazing. And she's even kind of developing into a good guy by the, th by the third season. Admittedly, I don't think the joke hit quite as hard in season three as we did in the first two seasons. But, I do love the story. I do love the story of Harley and Ivy. Ivy having this grand plan to turn, to turn Gotham into the Green Garden. And for Harley to be super supportive but deep down think, do I really want this? That is so Harley Quinn in this series and I applaud the writing for that. The only critique I have with the show is that they keep bringing the Joker back. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the Joker, especially in this series, but they keep bringing him back. And I really feel like his story just kind of ended in the first season when Harley kind of gets over him. And bringing him back kind of feels a bit undermining in the in season two and three. But what I will say is that Oh god, I really need to play one well, no. What I will say is that I love the direction that they're taking the Joker. It really kind of feels, it feels really hilarious. Like, it feels really funny, but kind of in the joking nature, because just up and stop being a criminal once Batman's gone. I kind of like how they turned him into a suburban gag, but he's also still, he's also in character. He's still in character, he's still in touch with his chaotic side, and I really love that. <clears throat> and, I mean, season 4 looks like it's going to bring back the Joker. Um, it'll be interesting to see where the story goes next, but, yeah. I really love this show as a whole. And Clayface and King Shark. I think Clayface is probably my favourite character in the Harley Quinn show. Just for the fact that he's kind of an idiot, but in the funniest way possible. And yet, it's still kind of in touch with his character to be a struggling actor uh, trying to find an acting career. That feels really in line with Clayface's character and in the comics and the animated series. That kind of a whole stick. He's a struggling actor uh, who had his life turned around when he was turned into a clay monster. And the fact that this version of Clayface in the, in the Harley Quinn series is it not really doing anything evil unless he go unless it's with Harley Quinn. I think it's really good and the fact that he's not as evil and he's just a struggling actor trying to find a good career feels very in line it feels very satirical but still in line with Clayface's character. And turning King Shark into a tech savvy mutated shark monster is just hilarious. Oh my god. 
I like him in Suicide, in the 2021 Suicide Squad, but I loved him in this series. He's given so much of a character, and the fact that they kind of give him this chill, tech-savvy personality, while also giving him a angry, shark-like personality, <laughs> feels really hilarious to me. Like, one moment he can be really chill and sweet, and other, mo other times he can be really terrifying and blood-hungry. Oh my god, it feels... Yeah, it kind of feels in line to what an actual shark could be like. Like they could just be swimming in the ocean, minding their own big neck, and then, and then once they smell blood, they're all over you. It feels really in line with how a shark, an actual shark would act. Uh, this series as a whole is amazing. The character writing, the storytelling, the animation. It has this, the animation has this kind of serious comic book you look like you see in the comic book animated movies uh, but somehow it still goes well with the tone of the show I absolutely love that and oh man the writing in this the writing the storytelling um, and the animation and the voice acting they're all really good if you haven't watched the Harley Quinn animated series it is available on Mac or HBO Max if you're, a bit, if you're in the US. But if you're in the UK and you can't find the first three seasons, you can watch them on iTunes. They are currently on iTunes in the UK if you want to buy them. With that being said, that's all I have to say. Um, I'm Harry Fleet TV and I'll see you in the next video.